Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that stands to our feet. Lord God, we just worship you this morning. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. Holy Spirit, we ask that you fill this place this morning. Lord God, I pray that you fill us today and you bring us a touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint this service and the speaker today as your word goes forth. And we ask all of this in your holy, precious name. And all God's people say, Amen.
just my God to move I speak the name Cause it's all that I can do In desperation I seek heaven I pray this for you I pray for you
Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God for he will forgive generously. My thoughts, he says, are nothing like your thoughts. And my ways, the Lord says, are far beyond anything you could ever imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts are higher than yours. I thought, well, Lord, that sums it up to me who you are. Such a loving, inviting God, generously forgiving us for our sins, generously giving his one and only son for us so that we can live eternal life. Nowhere closer than ours. The way we see ourselves is unworthy. He doesn't see that. He doesn't think that. He doesn't say that. But we do. I know what I do. I feel like I'm unworthy. I feel like I'm not a good mom. I, I know we all have such thoughts that God's word says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. So if you need healing, if you need to feel that God is who he says he is, this is where it's at. This is how it's done. You pray, you receive, you believe, and you step in it. You step in and you receive, Lord, I am worthy because your word says that you have chosen me. Your word says that you have given me me. Your word says that you have created me in the wound of my mother. Lord, that is who you are. That is what you see me as, a great mom.
spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take this time now, and we're going to go ahead and pray for one another. So go ahead and stretch your hand out. If you know that person, you know, or if you don't, ask them their name. Ask them how you can pray for them. Because, you know, the Bible says that that a prayer of a righteous person is 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 powerful and effective. Amen. So we're going to pray with the authority that King Jesus gave us. We're praying, believing in miracles, signs, and wonders, and breakthrough. We're in agreement. Amen. Father, Lord Jesus, we just call upon your name, for you are our healer, Lord God. You are where our help comes from, Father God. Father God, you paid it all at the cross, Father God. It is by your stripes we are healed, Father God. And so we stand in agreement, Father God. Believe it today is a day of breakthrough, Father God. Believe that cancerous cells are disappearing in the name of Jesus, Father God. Pray, Lord God, that marriages are being restored, Father God, that our sons and daughters, our prodigal sons and daughters are coming home, Lord God. Addiction is to fall in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just give you the glory. We give you the praise, Father God, for you are worthy, Lord God, for you are able, Lord God. Father God, I know that in, in, in the Bible, Lord God, you even talked about it was impossible. Father God, for a, a camel to go through the head of a needle, Father God. But nothing is impossible with you, Lord God. That was that was what you were saying. There's nothing impossible. And so we lay all these requests at your feet, Father God, believing in breakthrough, Father God. We're believing in signs and wonders, Father God. We give you the honor, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead and greet one another with an aloha. joining us this morning. It's such a wonderful day and a special day for the children, especially for the children. But, hey, um, if this is your first time to King's Lahaina slash Oluwalu, could you raise your hand for me? I know I've met a few of you that have been here a few times, but we thank you for um, uh, coming back and returning and worshiping with us. As you can see, um, do you have any guests this morning? All right. Hey, Pete, can you hear me? Okay. Put your earbuds on. <laughs> hey, um, as you can see, Pastor Cowie and Minister Shirley are not here this morning. They're taking a little, well, I say a break, but not really because uh, there were family um, this morning and a lot of family and you know how that goes. So let's remember to pray for them. They're going to be back um, uh, tomorrow and they'll be back here Sunday uh, worshiping with us next Sunday, November 5th. But um, again, did we have any new visitors this morning? No? Well, let's just welcome each other with aloha. <laughs> uh, at the count of three, let's share aloha with each other. One, two, three. Aloha, and may God richly bless you. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. And if you have any children with you this morning, make sure you send them off way far in the distance over there. <laughs> we have some games and candies and toys and all kinds of goodies uh, for them today. We're celebrating our candy lane in lieu of our Halloween, quote unquote. And talking about Halloween, King's Cathedral on uh, the 31st of October, we will have a candlelight celebration. Am I really loud or am I just, no? Okay, maybe because I'm in right in front of the speaker. I'll, I'll shout more. Uh, but candy, candy Lane will be celebrated also on the 31st of October at King's Cathedral. So make sure you go there. It's a drive-through, but it's a, a different experience there. So make sure you take your kids, your family there. It's a time for uh, people to um, just invite your friends and family in a fun way and then hear the word of the Lord and hear the uh, presentation of the salvation and the gospel. Amen? Praise God. Anything that we can do to usher people into the kingdom of God, we'll do it. 
So that's what we do here at King's. So remember that. And then for your leaders, we have any life group leaders? You, um, can I see the hands, please? Okay, praise God. We have a leaders meeting at 5 p.m. this uh, this evening at the King's Cathedral. Uh, Pastor Joss has a, um, uh, a word of encouragement for you, so please be there. And you know what? If you want to be a life group leader, please be there also. So um, at 5 p.m. at the King's Cathedral in Kapalui. Amen? And then we have Pastor Joss. We have Pastor Joss speaking tonight. So he always has a good word for us. So let's be there and receive. Amen? And guess what? November is coming along. And yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Don't forget, it's Michelle's birthday. <laughs> but we have a November gift giveaway. So when you come back to service next week, Make sure you fill out one of the, the cards, okay? Because we're going to go ahead and if you fill out all the information, we're going to go ahead and put your name in a drawing. And then we'll have gifts, not candies, gifts um, uh, to give away. So please do that. Amen? And if you'd like to donate a, um, a gift, you're welcome to do that also. And the last thing I want to say, I want everybody to listen. I need everybody's ears because this is really important. Next week, Sunday, is November 5th. Amen? We will not have service here because there's going to be a wedding. We are going to be having a service at 11501 Kono Piilani Highway. So as you came in the gate, you came in, everybody remember the gate? As soon as you come in the gate, before your car even goes through, you take a left and there's a long road. At the end of that road is Pete, not Pete, Maggie's house. <laughs> <laughs> and we will have servers there. And the address is 11501 Corner Pigilani Highway. And so that's where, if you need if you need more directions, please see us. But that's where the service is, is going to be next Sunday. So please remember that, okay? And share it with everyone on social media and everyone and invite everyone. P or excuse me, Maggie has a lot of places, has room, has a lot of room on her property. So come over and worship with us. Amen. And we have a guest speaker, Roby Sod Sodenreger. I hope I didn't kill that name, but he's a um, a pastor minister from Australia. So uh, that's that's going to be exciting. He's going to pour some uh, words of life into us. So next week Sunday, Amen. I don't have any questions for you, but do you have any questions for me? Oh, you want to say something? Okay, you got thirty seconds. I got to stop it. Okay, everybody knows my wife Maggie. And I, our house is, you can just walk down the beach and get there, but 11501, and by the way, if you get lost, the cell numbers are little, uh, cell phone, 30 seconds, brother, no, uh, take my number down if you want. And 808 2831273 please come, we're going to have a good turn now, and Maggie's going to cook for us maybe afterwards, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, anyway, we look forward to it. I want a good turn now. Oh, uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll have Korean barbecue, or I heard the pizzas are good too, so. All right? Praise God. So remember, November 5th, next Sunday, 11501, Honopilani Highway. Amen? That away. Okay. Now we're going to have Dusty, and he's going to encourage us in our giving. Amen? Anybody needs encouraging? Amen. Hallelujah. How are we doing, Kings Lahaina, on this Sunday morning? Amen, amen. Are you guys ready to give today? Ready to sow? Uh, if you could open your Bibles to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Psalms 23. We're going to go, we're going to read that whole chapter. It says, starting with verse 1, it says, and I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. The NLT says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest 
In green meadows, he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valleys, I will not be afraid, for Amen. you are close beside me. Your rod, your staff protects me and comforts me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 What 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 I got from here is the first couple words. It says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I have all that I need." How many knows know that the Lord is your shepherd? Amen. He is our provider in many different ways. Even it says right there, if you go down a little bit below in the chapter, even though I walk to the deepest and darkest valleys, he still is there, right? Amen. Amen. Even through what we face um, August 8th, he's still there. He over he, he, he did it way beyond. You know, what from my experience, my testimony is, you know, even though we lost everything, God is providing and he's still providing abundantly. It says that his Hallelujah. cup will overflow with blessings. And that cup is still overflowing with blessings. And that's what generosity does. When you, when, you, when you sow and you plant and you give in generosity, God will release whatever is in his hand once you release what's in your hand. It's like a valve that is about to be opened and the source is about to flow. And you're just a channel of that. Amen. Not only you're receiving, but you're releasing. Meaning that I have more than enough then I can help this brother or I can help this sister up. And that's what you see in the church now as well as you're seeing in Kings and it's growing and multiplying. Hallelujah. It's because the blessing is multiplying because you have generous planters. Thank you, Lord. You have people that are willing to go way above and beyond. I understand we lost everything. I lost everything. But I will still be and still be faithful to my tithing and my Amen. offering and my giving. In this time, I actually should give more because they said, yeah. with the same measure you give, the same measure you receive. Yeah, but we know that's not what God has in store for you. God is not just going to give you the same measure that you give. It says it will overflow. Amen. Cup overflow it yeah. with blessings. And that's what generosity does. Generosity does. So when you plant today, plant like that. You're not just planting in just your finances. You're planting in your family. Yeah. You want to see your family saved. You Amen. want to see your, your children saved. You want to see your aunts and uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your moms, your dads, your grandfathers saved. Yes. But also you want to see a whole community saved. Amen. That's why we give. We give to make impacts. And that's what generosity does. Generosity makes hero changers and changes the mindsets of people when we give. Because, man, he is so faithful. He is so faithful. He'll bless you way beyond you what you can fathom. That's why even Jadina said, his thoughts is greater than our thoughts. And when I pray, I pray, give me your thoughts, Lord. Give me your heart, Lord. Give me your desires. Because it's way beyond what we can fathom. And that's what his, his even when he blesses the source, he's the vine, we're just the branch. Amen? Well, there are three ways of giving. We have envelopes. If you need an envelope, one of these handsome ushers will get one to you. As well as we do have a text to give, I think, to 77977. Text give, right? To 77977. Or if you have uh, the King's, uh, King's Central app, you can give that way too as well. Mm -hmm. That's one of the goodest ways to give is pen, the PayPal. Way. That was good. Amen. <laughs> So if you're ready to give, <laughs> let me bless you. Even your giving goes to this, what's about to take place, Candile. We want to see kids set free. Amen? That's our generation. So even if you have a, your offering, raise it to that area right there too, because we're going to bless that area. Father God, I just thank you for this time, Father God, that we get to honor you, Father God. That we can give, Father God, and give from our hearts, Father God, knowing, Father God, where we planted, Father God, you are quick, Father God, to, to, to bless it, Father God. You are quick, Father God, to just 
Father God, be just the garner that waters it down, Father God, so that we can be fruitful in every way, Father God. Physically, Father God, financially, Father God, and spiritually, Father God. Let us, Father God, just, just give abundantly, Father God, above, Father God, what our flesh tells us, Father God. Because we know you're good and you're faithful. You're the source, Father God. You're our provider, Father God, in many ways. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, I know Maggie's birthday is November, but uh, anybody had a birthday in the month of October? Any October babies? Come on, we won't ask you your age. Come on up. We'd like to pray for you. Don't worry, we won't make you sing and dance. Oops. Praise God. Anyone else in the month of October? Oh, I see one right there. Come on up. Praise God. All right, come on, don't let me beg. Praise God, see? <laughs> Yay, ladies. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to have uh, Minister Mark pray for a uh, prayer blessing upon all of you. And then if you're good, we'll give you a box of chocolate. Hallelujah. Father God, we lift up to each of these, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, that you have a plan and a purpose for each of them, Father God. So you bless them, Lord God, with your blessing, Father God. Lord. They're the head, not the tail, the lender, not the borrower. They're above and not beneath, Lord God. That even this time... Father God, Lord, that they're here is not by accident, Lord God, it's by your perfect will, Lord God. So I pray you cover them, Lord God, and that, Father God, you will continue to strengthen them, Lord God, in your favor. Lord God, shall follow them all the days of their life, Lord God. We thank you for them and we bless them now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hey, we have a special speaker this morning. We love him dearly. And he's always been a part of Kings Lahaina for many, many years. And so, and he's, uh, he actually uh, ministers to the uh, Filipino ministry in Lahaina um, with, um, with his wife, um, Cherry. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get blessed by Minister Mark Carrillo this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. The presence of God is here. Amen. Let me get ready for the word. How's everybody this morning? It's good to break the ice now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn your Bibles to... Matthew chapter 6. Verse 5. Right there. If you're taking notes this morning, the title of my message is Always Pray. Matthew 6. Verse 5. Can we all stand for the reading of the word? You know, I told Pastor Kawi and uh, Minister Shalia that we were going to pray for them. But, you know, I want to thank them for allowing me this privilege to speak here this morning. Amen. So let's just pray for them as they're traveling. Father God, Lord, we lift up to you our leaders, Father God. Pastor uh, Kawi and Minister Shalia, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, your hand of protection be upon them, Lord God, that your favor will be over them, Lord God. That, Father God, Lord, as they travel, I pray for refreshing, Lord God, and even, Lord God, a fresh a revelation from you, Father God, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that, Lord God, you are over them, Lord God, and you were doing that which you called us to do, to pray for our leaders, Father God. So we thank you for them and we bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have the need, you have need before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you for your presence here this morning, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for your anointing, Lord God, to flow in and through me this morning, Lord God. And even to those, Lord God, hearing your words, Lord God, whether they be in Facebook Live, Lord God, or here, Lord God, in the audience, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would open our hearts this morning to receive, Lord God, the revelation that you want to impart to us this morning, Lord God. All of you, Lord God, and none of me, Father God. I pray, Lord God, for just, Lord God, a fresh touch this morning, Lord God, that you would move, Lord God, in signs and wonders, Lord God, knowing that people came here, Lord God, even with things, Lord God, that they have been dealing with, Lord God, but you have the power to deliver them, Lord God. Let that be your word this morning, Lord God, to set them free, just as your word says, Father God. And we praise you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm going to be closing the series on legacy this morning. Amen? Amen. And when Pastor Kawi had asked me to preach on prayer, you know, I've been, we've been really busy this past couple months because we've been going to Lanai. And, you know, when he texted me to preach on legacy of prayer, it's, I'm going to say that I was honored because Prayer is the foundation of everything in Christianity. I mean, when we come to the Lord, it was by prayer. A prayer of repentance. And this morning, my first point, if you're taking notes, is magnify. See, but, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Hold on. Jesus here tells us on verse 5, okay? When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Now he's telling us how not to pray. Why? Because we don't pray to get attention. Yeah. We pray because of relationship. Amen? How many of you know that you are a new person in Christ? The old is gone, the new has come. And Jesus says this, he says that I will not leave you as orphans. But I will be with you. I will send to you the counselor, the helper, the Holy Spirit. And he will, be with, he will be with you forever. So he gives us a helper, a comforter. It's like the source of his power that dwells in us as believers. So he tells us how not to pray. He says they receive their rewards when you pray in that way. Now, I didn't say that. God, Jesus says that, okay? And then here he says, verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room, secret room. How many of you have a secret place that you pray in? I do. It's good. Amen. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. But then he doesn't just say he will reward you, but he says he will reward you openly. That others might see his goodness. Now, I want us to, I'm going to be walking here, but can you tell I'm nervous? Praise God. <laughs> Whenever I preach the word of God, it's always that awareness that I am dependent upon him because at any moment he can move and I want to be open for that. Amen. But then here he's talking about praying in the secret place where God will reward you as you pray in secret openly so that others might know him as well. You see, like I was sharing earlier, we've been to Lanai and we've had opportunities to go into homes and pray for people. And where we sense the presence of God come. I mean, we come into this place, we come into these homes and there's, there's nothing. You don't sense anything. You can sense, sense burdens at times, but then when we come and when we leave, we, we just sense the presence of God. And then even as we pray for them, we, we sense God's presence and they begin to cry inside as if there's been burdens that they've been holding on to. You see, we serve a God 
that is able. Come on. The word of God says that heaven and earth is his. He is creator. So I love this where he begins to say, go into your secret room. And he who rewards, uh, he who hears in secret will reward you. And then another one, he says, do not use vain repetitions when you pray. Meaning just babble. And you know, the, the example that was given is in a second Kings where they were praying to Baal. Now how many of you know that we serve the one true God? There's others that serve multiple gods that they pray to a tree. But let me tell you this. The, the tree will not bear fruit because you pray to it. The tree bears fruit because God has assigned it in that purpose. Just as we have a purpose. Amen? They think they will be hurt for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of. Before you ask him. How does he know that? I want you to know that. When you receive Jesus Christ in your life. He sends to you the helper. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. There's this called baptism of the Holy Ghost. Where you receive your heavenly language. And when you pray in that heavenly language. You pray the perfect will of God. Every single time. So I can't go by my day praying. Not praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because I understand that the burdens inside of me, I cannot remove of my own strength. Come on. The Holy Ghost, the Helper, the Counselor, the Comforter will comfort you. But if you never lean upon Him, then you become callous to the things of God. Where you show up to a service and not even sense His presence. And you will walk away the same way you came in, not receiving. We need not be callous. The Bible says as the day grows darker, we need to be more aware of that which God has given us, which Jesus has died and purchased for us. Okay, now, you ready? Jesus says, this is then how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. My first point is magnify. Magnify God, our Father in heaven. When you say those words, you begin to now identify yourself as his son. Now, I want you to know something here. You see, this is the book of Matthew, which was originally intently for the Jewish audience. Okay? Now, they were those that were chosen by God, and they felt special about it. How many of you know? Let me read your Bibles. They felt special about it. And one of the things that you'll see and you'll notice as you read the scriptures is nobody prayed the way that Jesus prayed here. When he says, our father. Now he's begin to commune himself with the father. Now it wouldn't be wrong for him because he was the call. They were the called people of God. But it would be unusual for us Gentiles who does not have the Jewish background. To come before God. It would be unusual. Even to the point that they almost stoned Jesus for communing himself with God saying he is his father. How many of you know that? They almost stoned him because he called God his father. But then we can call God our father. But then you begin to hear that said, our. You see, Jesus was doing something there that was blowing the minds of even the Jews at that time. He was saying that we can come. God is establishing something. Our Father. Where? In heaven. This is going to be key, okay? Ephesians 2.18 says that for through Him we both have access by one Spirit. What Spirit is that? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. To the Father. <laughs> Listen to this. This is Jesus' prayer. John 17.3 says, And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So right there, he's telling you, they might know you. This is eternal life. Because the spirit that lives in you will be in you forever. And he will guide you into all truth. Jesus says that, I will go, but my spirit will stay with you. And I will be with you, even to the end of the age. You see, we're not praying for victory. We're praying 
from victory. There's the difference. You're not trying to achieve something. You're not trying to get saved. No, you're saved already. God calls you his son. And for us, even in this time, it's like unusual to be that. Because when you understand the Gentiles were not even allowed into that. Why is this important? I want you to know that the scriptures, when you go from old to new, God reveals in the New Testament what was the mystery in the Old Testament. Malachi 1.11 says, For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense, prayer shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. What is he talking about? When you pray, God's will be done on earth. You're praying his perfect will and God will answer that will. See, sometimes we're praying something. God, give me a car. God, give me this. God, give me that. But if you're not ready for it, he's not going to give it to you. Is it according to his will that you're praying or is it according to your needs? Come on. Is it according to his will? What are you doing? Are you doing the will of God? Or do we just want to do a religious duty? I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not talking to this crowd because you're here. Come on, amen. Pat yourself on the back. It says here, a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. God was getting ready to do something and Jesus was revealing those nuggets. You see, when you come in a service like this to receive from him, I want you to grab those words and claim it upon yourself because you might be going through something and then you will walk away not receiving it but then it's right there a nugget hanging for you that you would grab hold of his word jesus says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of god what are you listening to what are you speaking life to what are you receiving for yourself hallelujah Our Father, hallowed be your name. When you pray, is God magnified in your situation? Now, I want to just pause here for a minute. Okay, because we pray prayers and we read how we should pray and how we shouldn't pray. But then, when we come before God, do we praise Him? Do we thank Him? Is He magnified? Do we have an attitude of gratitude to receiving from Him? See, those things are important. Because one of the things I'm going to tell you is, the enemy, the devil, will not challenge you. And one of the things you'll realize is that when you begin to pray, all of a sudden, things that needs to be doing happens. Why is that? I remember when I used to pray. I mean, you know, I... I Everything is done. It's peaceful. Then I begin to pray and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I remember that I had to do something. One of the things that we need to do is to protect our prayer life because from it comes everything. You see, sometimes we look at prayer and then we say that, you know, we don't have time for it. We're too busy in the day and we're, we're just like, even in this time, like we're, we just don't have enough time in the day. But in that, we magnify God. Because when we take the time to pray, He can begin to speak into our situation and tell you what He thinks about your situation, but not leave you there. But then you begin to get this peace. The Bible says that the peace that surpasses understanding. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen? It's having that communion with Him and knowing Him. How much do you know about God? Is He able? Is He able in your situation to get you through it? You know, before, early in my walk, I used to look at my situation and I just say, God, how am I going to get out of this? And you know, it took time of prayer. Not only me praying, but even when altar time comes, and, you know, at times, you know, you pray and then you think like, God, it's even getting worse. How many of you have ever experienced that? You feel like, how is it getting worse when I'm praying more? Because you need to realize that we're not operating in our timing. We're operating in His timing. 
You see, in a time where everything is now, 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 instant gratification, instant celebrity, instant this, instant that, we need to realize that God still is the same yesterday, today, and forever because God doesn't create something that is temporary. He's doing something that is eternal. Remember when Jesus says, this is eternal life, that they might know you, the one true God. It's intimacy. Where are you going? That you have to have it now. Where are you going? You see, when we die, we go to Him. Heaven is our home. We're not from this world. Everybody good? Amen. Quiet. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to get to my second point, which is submission. First was? Magnify. Magnify. Second is submission. See, the right kind of prayer has a passion for God's glory and agenda. How many of you know that you're in the offense? How many of you here watch football? Right? So when the offense has the ball, they're moving the ball towards the goal. Amen. Towards the goal. So we're on the offense. Who's on the defense? The gates of hell. But we need to understand that we have weapons. You see, prayer is warfare. How many of you know that? Prayer is warfare. His name, okay, let me read it to you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His name and his kingdom have top priority in our life. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. He says that God is more important. His kingdom, his will. Even when he says that man shall not live by only bread, meaning the daily food, but by the word that proceeds out of God's mouth. Submission. John 6, 38, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now, here Jesus is modeling, and we read, as we read the Gospels, we know that and we see that. That everything that Jesus did, he was led. He was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be what? Tempted. Amen. <laughs> Tempted by the devil. But did Jesus overcome the temptation? Was it by his strength? Was it by the sermon of the pastor that week that just gave him the goosebumps and he's just like, oh man, I'm ready to fight the devil right now? No, because you see, my prayer for you is not going to sustain you because I don't have to go through your trials. Yeah. Right? You see, you got to go through trials yourself. You got to deal with the heartache, the pain, but then the Bible says that God disciplines those that he loves. But then it says that we don't like to be disciplined because it, right. it's painful. It's painful. Yeah. But then you see, one of the things that you're going to realize is that in the discipline, God is with you. Yeah. He wants us to take shelter in him. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. How else will we come to him? The Bible says that we will draw near to God and He will what? Draw near unto you. You see, this is a condition. When you begin to feel that you're not strong enough, you will draw unto God. That's what Jesus did. Jesus fasted for 40 days and then the devil came. In the weakest point, God showed Himself faithful. The Holy Spirit in our life is the one that guides us into all truth. He reminds us of what Jesus says. Even Jesus says that he will remind you 
of the things that I have said and bring to your remembrance what I have spoken unto you. So how important is it that we know the word of God? Because if God speaks from his word, how can we discern if it's from God or not? You know, there's false prophets nowadays that you hear, but then how do we know if what they're speaking is false? If we don't know the word of God for ourselves, like that same way I was telling you, if I, if I pray for you and you don't pray for your situation, I'm not going to have to go through your trials. You'll have to go through your trials, but I'll be there with you. But in that, is He your source? You see, we magnify God because in this life, He is our source. The world is not for us. God is for us. Amen? Matthew 16, 19 says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What is Jesus talking about there? What is Jesus talking about? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Who is backing us? Heaven. Heaven. Whatever is available in heaven is going to be available on earth. Whose will are we doing? God's will, submission, and we're going to get to this. Amen, we're going to get through this. <laughs> Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Is there sick people in heaven? Just curiosity. No, there's not. Is there poverty in heaven? No. Jesus became poor, so that way we might become rich. Yeah. Does that mean we're going to be multimillionaires? No. Maybe. That's right. Maybe. But you see, our source is God. Second yeah. Corinthians ten four through five says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. To the obedience of Christ. Do you sometimes catch yourself and you you, you know that you that thinking is not of God, and then you just hold it, you just hold it captive and put it into submission. Because we have to realize that we're in a process of sanctification. God is purifying us, purifying our motives, purifying us, making us holy unto Himself. And I'm not saying that we're not that, but He's making us holy in Himself by the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Amen. So how can we take Jesus' word for submission? This is a quote from Charles Spurgeon. How many of you know him? Here he says that he taught us this prayer used it in himself, used it himself in the most unrestricted sense when the bloody sweat stood on his face and all the fear and trembling of a man in anguish were upon him. He did not dispute the decree of the Father, but bowed his head and cried, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was asking the Father to take the cup of suffering from him. You know, this past Friday, I had the opportunity to preach in Lanai. And, and I was preaching about Jesus in the book of Matthew, where he was coming to the Father and, and asking him to take that cup. But then even at that point where he had a choice to not go to the cross, but then he submitted himself. And he was at the point of anguish, where he was trembling. He says that he was in such turmoil inside that he was sweating blood you see Jesus is not telling us something that he himself did not face but that's why he tells us that he has overcome the world Amen. he gives us a model of how we ought to live our life Amen. Philippians 4 6-7 says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Here, Paul is telling us that we should be anxious about nothing. But by prayer. See, prayer is our lifeline to God. It's our connection. It helps us through even the toughest times. Because sometimes it feels like you have nobody to go to that can understand you. How many of you ever went through that? season where you just feel like God is, is, is isolating you. But not so that you can be on your own, but that He can speak into your situation. I, I remember when I first came to the Lord, I prayer was really what I would do when I wasn't doing anything else. I would read the Word of God and I had uh, people like Minister Patty that would speak into even questions that I had about the Word of God because I was so hungry for the Word. Not knowing that I will be here one day preaching the Word of God to a crowd. See, you see, every time I come before the presence of God, even as I hear the word, I'm always trying to grab hold of something that I can apply in my life. Because how many of you know, it's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to begin to apply it in your life. And I'm not telling you, it's easy. No, it's not. When they slap you, turn the other cheek. Forgive them. And at times, you just want to slap them right back, right? But... He tells us not to, but to trust Him. That's submission. But it's still good. Hot. <laughs> Jesus wanted us to pray with the desire that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. And He reveals it by His word, His will. Now we're going to go to verse 11. And the third point that I have for you is dependence. See, the right kind of prayer will really bring us its own needs to God. Verse 11 says it's for... Wait. Verse 11 says that, Give us this day our daily bread. So, when we pray to God to ask for our daily bread... There's this uh, quote that I, I read. It says here, It is for one day at a time, reflecting the precarious lifestyle of many first century workers who were paid one day at a time and for whom a few days' illness could spell tragedy. Meaning that if we were dependent upon our daily bread in the way that we prayed to God, how much would we have? That's a question for all of us to internalize. Amen. You don't have to share, but it's to internalize, meaning how much, if we prayed and our daily bread was dependent upon our praying to Him every day, would we have enough? See, in the first century, they would have, they would be paid a day's wage. And if they couldn't come to work that day, then they wouldn't have food. And it depended upon how many days they weren't showing up to work. So then they had to live through those couple days without any bread. But then our daily bread is to ask God every day for our need. Amen? Because He is our provider. He is our supplier. He supplies all our needs. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 12, Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Those are words that are easier said than done. Because a lot of us, we face those kinds of things. And that's why we come into the place of prayer. Because we need God to help us and to empower us. Not so that we can go back and give our trust again to those that have done that to us. But then we can know in our heart that nothing stands before Him. You see, He cares for us. But then we have to use wisdom as well. Amen. We don't go through situations where we can again allow ourselves to be open. But then we, we forgive that person and we just move on. God helps us in that. 
verse 13 says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Did I jump? Did I jump. Forgive us, let's forgive our debtors. Meaning that as we forgive others, you know, as we forgive others, and even as we pray that prayer, what begins to happen is that those people that have done us wrong, God will help us to forgive them in a sense that where it gets easier. How many of you ever asked for, for God to help you in that, in that area? You see, there's more hands in that because it's one of those hardest things that, that we face. But then as we begin to learn to forgive, then we begin to walk with that awareness that we don't have to hold on to those things. Because what happens is we begin to become callous to the things of God when we just uh, continue to walk. And that's why, you know, sometimes when we walk into uh, certain people's homes as we pray for them, we, we, we don't sense the presence of God. But then, you know, after we pray for them, the presence of God comes into that place and then they begin to cry because why? Because you see, God makes us sensitive to Him again. Because our hearts can become hardened so easily by the troubles of our lives. The things that we face. And that's why when we come before God, we can lean upon Him and He can be our strength. Right? Because you can't tell everything to your husband that you know that it's like sometimes you feel like you're going to begin to give him a burden that he doesn't need to carry. So you hold on to it. So now you're carrying this baggage. And then the only one that has the power to remove that baggage from off of you, you're not coming to him. So there's people that are walking around with baggages and not knowing that the one who has the power to deliver them from it, we can come to him wherever we are. Jesus says that there's a time that's coming when you will neither worship in Jerusalem nor in this mountain. For those that worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus is truth. You see, we don't have to hold on to something that... that we have brought upon ourselves, but then yet He begins to tell us to rely upon Him, that He will be our strength. You see, God is building a relationship through us, through prayer as our lifeline. How many of you husbands, the only time that you speak to your wife is when you say hi and bye? See, intimacy does something to the relationship. What happens when you go through tough times as you're going through it together? What does it do? It strengthens your marriage, right? It becomes a glue. See, those hard times were not easy, but together you will get through it. You see, the Spirit of God empowers us to do that which is supernatural, but it's not upon us to do what we cannot do. It's by the power of God and by His grace that He's allowed it. Jesus died on the cross. You never had to shed a blood for the forgiveness that He's given you. But even death itself could not separate you from His love. That's what He's shedding for you. He's giving you access to magnify Him in your situation. But what are you magnifying? Who's the first person that you call upon when you're going through hard times? Your neighbor? You tell your husband? You tell your brother? You tell your dad? You tell your mom? Who can do nothing for you but God? Who is your source? We magnify Him in our situation and we submit to Him to do His will. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Be our supplier. Be our source. When you walk with that awareness, even Brother um, Dusty was saying earlier, when you walk with that awareness, whatever you lose, you can by faith believe God and take Him for His word. You see, these words aren't empty. When you apply them to your life, they will, God will show you His power. God will show you His provision. That's why we know His name. His name will be glorified in all the nations. Why? Because the Bible says that every tribe, every nation, every tongue will what? Will worship Him. He is the one true God. Hallelujah. And lead us not into temptation. Here again, Jesus is saying we become dependent upon God to lead us not into temptation. Jesus 
was aware of the temptation. Why? Because he himself had to face it. But he depended upon God by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, at his weakest moment, when the enemy thought that he could have his way with him, the word of God proceeded out of his mouth. You see, for us, it just depends really, I believe, because if you've gone through the toughest times and you had no one to lean on but God, you will understand from what, what place you're receiving from. You, you can't receive something that yet is not applied in your life yet. You, you get what I'm trying to say? Meaning that if you haven't gone through it, you can't understand what it's like. You see, I stand here before you, and I used to call myself a Christian back when I was younger, but I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know the definition of a Christian. You see, Christian is a Christ follower to be like him on this earth, right? Apart from perfection, amen, because Jesus was perfect. He lived the perfect, sinless life, and he gave that up for us that we might know the Father, He's revealing Him to us. And even in these last days, the Word of God is beginning to unravel its mysteries. How many of you are excited? You see, we're excited for the rapture. But then if the one that's returning for us is somebody that is unknown to us, what is there to be excited about? Lord, 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 did we not do this in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? And Jesus will tell them, not me, I'm just a messenger. Jesus will tell them, depart from me, I never knew you. Intimacy, relationship, making your heart right so it doesn't have callousness where the enemy can come in. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We live in a sinful world. The Bible says that sin that so easily entangles. But then when we begin to be watchful, meaning that we are aware of our surrounding. We are aware of His presence. The Bible says that God gives us a way out. That's the same thing that Jesus was telling Peter in here, Matthew 26, 41. It says, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. So when they were sleeping and they were awoken by Jesus being captured, because they hadn't prayed to understand. What did Peter do? He acted out in the, the flesh. He cut off the ear of the guard. Not understanding that Jesus had to go through this. But all his ministry, all throughout, he was telling them about it. But they didn't become aware. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. We need to strengthen our spirit man. And our spirit man is only in strengthen and Awakened in prayer. John 17, 15 through 17 says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The spirit of truth that lives in you sanctifies you. The word of God is our guide into truth. The more we understand His Word, the more we understand the leading of the Lord. It's not automatic. It is by choice. We have free will. Just as Jesus could have at that point said, I don't want to go to the cross. This, this is too much of a burden for me to carry. But then yet He endured for the joy that was set before Him. He endured the cross. This is my closing. How many of you have ever heard the parable of the unjust judge? So I'm just going to kind of like uh, simplify that. Eh? So here it says, uh, Luke 18, 5 says, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now we know that this is the unjust judge. And it says that he neither feared God nor feared men. 
But then this widow continued to harass her, to give her justice. And it says that every day he followed, she followed him from when he left the court and then he went into the court and he was just like, man, this, she's tiring me out. And then Jesus is using her as an example. See, the widow is the church. As we continue to pray to God and we ask him for all these things, says that God hears us and he's quick. It says here, Luke 17, or Luke 18, verse 7. It says, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Bears long for what? His return. You see, God wants people to be saved. That's why He's waiting. He's using us to release His will on the earth. What is His will? That others might know Him by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, His Son, that others might come into the kingdom. You see, we can have a service like this and, and we think, you know, we get to enjoy, we get to just refresh, we get to hear good music. You know, as we were having service in our house in the Pili, there would be people that are walking uh, the road and they would just sit, they would just sit and listen and, and enjoy the worship. Not understanding that God in that moment is planting a seed. Those of you who serve, you're not just serving to be a part of something. You're, so, you're serving in something that is eternal. There is rewards, the Bible says. There are rewards. It says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, when you begin to grab hold of the word of God, and sometimes it's, it's something that you begin to even receive in prayer. How many of you ever received the word from God in prayer and you stood on that word and you saw God fulfill it? You see, that's faith. I, I, those are my life verses where God told me in one season, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Submission means I can't control everything. But then when I submit myself to God, He is for me. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Isn't that what Jesus did? He submitted himself to God even to the point that he was hungry. He submitted himself. How much more? The church. And why? Because you see, that was one widow. And Jesus says that God will speedily answer her prayer. That was one. We're many. You see, Jesus is building his church in this time. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I talked about the keys to the kingdom. What are keys meant to do? Open doors. Start engines, start cars, right? Keys are meant to unlock things. But you will not see the full potential until you begin to understand what God is in these days releasing you to unlock. There's a world out there that needs Him. And it's getting darker. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm glad to say it, but you know, as His coming is nearing, we have to understand that there is a part that we play. And even in this mission trips that we're doing in Lanai, like we're seeing people touched. And we're giving all glory to God because even, you know, at times like I just, I think about what I'm doing and I'm just like, God, how am I able to do all this? Because you've unlocked something. It's called the anointing of God. I stand here before you not as a person that went to Bible school, but I had people that God used to mentor me. To understand, to know, and to preach the word of God in its clarity. Because at times, the word of God is going to come and it's going to cut you. But then it's not meant to cut you that that cut will stay. No, it's meant that that cut will begin to expose things that is not there, that's not supposed to be there. How many of you agree? Amen? Luke 18, 1, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You know, there's times when I used to pray for things and like I, I said earlier, it, it, it felt like it got worse. So it made me not want to pray. But then that's when God started moving in those situations. And I'm not saying like, you know, because at, at times you just, there's seasons where you're just like, God, I can't even get up and pray. 
Everything is just downhill. But you see, when you begin to stand and you begin to do the things, even though at those times when you're just like, you're so tired. That's when He shows up. So that's what He did in, with Jesus, right? In the time where He was sweating blood and He was at that point of agony where He was just, I don't know what to do. But not my will, but your will be done. You see, our life is the legacy that our family members will see. It's not the words that we say. It's the action that we took. It's prayer. You'll run to. Or is prayer just passive when everything's going good? You're praising God, jumping on the tables. When everything is going to hell, is prayer your lifeline to the one who redeemed and saved you? Is everybody good? <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, I, preaching a message like this, it's tough because at, at times it's like people, you know, you, you don't know what's happening, but it's not for me to know. It's just for me to obey. And I know that. Because God could be doing something deeper. But we're going to pray a prayer. Amen. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation. So I want us all to stand and pray this prayer with me. You know, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God gives us eternal life. That when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. Amen. And I believe that. So I want us to pray this prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for my sin. You took my punishment upon your body so that I can have eternal life. Lord Jesus, from this day forward, I give my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to send me your Holy Spirit. That from this day forward, I will walk in your purpose, your will, for my life. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. You know, the Bible says when you pray that prayer, that Jesus comes into your life. And he rearranges your life to where he can begin to instill his purpose in you and establish you first in prayer because it's our source he is our source amen so well this hallelujah what is that a good word wasn't that a powerful word well i want to bless you guys they stick around we do have food we're going to fellowship um, as well as the kids can still enjoy the jumping castles, whatever Minister Kaleo has going on. But let us all stand. Let us, let's, let's contend in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. This message of, of a relationship that we need, Father God. To be intimate with you daily, Father God. To be in your word. To be in prayer, Father God. To walk knowing, Father God, that you are the only one we're truly dependent on, Father God. So we pray that it will be sealed in our hearts, Father God. And may we, when we go into our work week, Father God, into this week, Father God, may it be sealed forevermore, Father God. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory, Father God. We even pray for the food, Father God, for the hands that prepare them for us, Father God. That you would bless that hands, Father God. That you would bless our bodies as we partake, Father God, of a meal, Father God. And even that we have our conversations when we fellowship, Father God. May it be holy and righteous and pure for you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. Hey. Oh. Hey. We want to give a shout out to LNL. They They provided meals for us today. As well as LJ is cooking some hot dogs. So we bless LNL. We bless our LJ. Thank you.
Hey, let us see, let us see. Amen. Amen. Yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs>